Hey everybody, it's Craig Blackhawk again with The Truth Behind the Smoke. And I've got a longtime friend here. Her real name is Shaw Day. Yes. Named after the singer. And um, her uh, stage name is Gemini. Yes, that's what I go by. And I'm a professional dancer. When I say stage name and she says professional dancer. I'm an exotic dancer. I'm, I'm a stripper. That's what I do. And Been we're going to talk about what leads into that. And we're going to kind of go through some paradigms and some truths and um, some beliefs and disbeliefs and things in that whole world and how you get how she got into that and what leads up to that so um, we're gonna kick that off tell me a little bit about like when you was a kid and growing up what was that like so uh, I grew up in a two in a two-parent household for sure up until like a certain age but um, honestly my like little little years like they weren't bad you know like I was I was spoiled I'm not gonna lie I was the youngest and so I, I got whatever I wanted but um once we started getting older you know losing our mom and then my sister moved in with her dad's side of the family and I was with my with my dad's side of the family it was a lot like happening at once how you old know? were you when that happened uh, I was 12. I was That's 12. When, and you lost your mom yeah yeah she um committed suicide so um, was that something, I'm sure it was devastating, but was there, looking back on it, was there anything that, was um, there any signs or? Honestly, no, like not really, like none of us really saw that coming, you know, like it was very much not ever expected from anyone that even knew her to begin with, you know, like that was never something that we saw coming, you know, it was very like out of nowhere for us, so it took all of us by surprise, it was a really like difficult time for my family for sure but one thing i can say that i am grateful for is that we're all very much on good terms now and we all speak and all our relationships are getting back in order you know me my dad's relationship has never been like the best you know i've always been a daddy's girl you know that's my very first tattoo i got daddy's little girl tattooed on my shoulder you know that's my it's my right hand man right there but We've had our share of difficult times, me and him, me and my sister. You know, we've all had our fair share of issues. But at the end of the day, we family. We know that. So through investigations and things, I've helped people. Um, suicide's always hard to believe. I've had people um, just, they say that their family members weren't didn't, didn't commit suicide. They wanted to investigate as homicides. And mm -hmm. um, how, how do you... Or do you ever, did you ever really feel like you've ever healed with that? Um, honestly, it's still a healing process, you know, like in my brain, like it's not really something that I'm gonna truly ever heal from, you know, and be completely over, you know, there's still days where I have like random meltdowns just because, you know, like there's things that she should be here for that she's not, you know, but it's just one of those things that you just kind of learn to live with it. You know, you kind of learn to live with that pain and it fades over time. It's not as bad as it was, but it's something that you're always going to carry with you. Like you never truly let it go or get over it. Were you angry? Oh, very much so. I'm still mad. She still got me messed up and she know it too. I say it every day. She still got me messed up. But at the same time, you know, she's not here dealing with everything that's going on anymore. So were you athletic in school? What about I school? was. So in school, I was not, honestly, I was I was not popular. Like, I was not a popular person. Like, I was the popular loner. Like, I had, like, a couple, like, cool, real cool friends that I was always with. But as far as that goes, like, I wasn't really popular. I was just a person that everybody, like, knew. Like, they knew who I was, but we didn't really hang out or anything like that. Huh. But I, I played... I played basketball. I ran track. I did volleyball whenever we had a volleyball You're built team. For volleyball when track. I first, He's yeah, tall. yeah, I love. I'm like six foot six one, somewhere in there. I'm very very tall, but I love it. Honestly, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for anything. I wish I was taller. God kind of did me dirty. I used to tell people in high school all the time. My coaches like, man, if I can hit like six four, I'll be good. If I can hit like six four, I'll be straight. I'll be walking on somebody's runway at that point. You know, like yeah, then you have no true. choice you're but still to tall enough to model, and you're well, pretty. I'm, yeah, very much so. You know, I'm, I could, but you know, if I was six four, you know, then it's like automatic. Oh. Like, dang, like you're you're tall, but you're pretty too. So like, you can you can do it. And then after high school, um, you graduate high school. Yes, most definitely. I walk the stage. I have my okay. diploma for sure. And um, but you grew up. You you talked and reminded me on the way in here that you grew up. Um, we're here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and you grew up Northside. Yes, yes, um, that's that's my home. And uh, which 
you know, I, I travel around and people are like, oh, yeah, it's on First 48 all the time. Like, yeah, see, I swear people <laughs> always say that. But listen, Tulsa, okay, Tulsa has its downfalls, of course. We have our crime and our shootouts and, our, and all that jazz. You know, we have our fair share of BS, okay? Fair. But it's not as bad as there are other places that are way worse than Tulsa. So, know. like, when people are like, oh, you live in Tulsa, Tulsa I'm like, it's Memphis really Memphis and bad. Detroit are always on First 48. Oh, okay. <laughs> that is true, but I promise. Listen, when I was growing up, it was not this bad. Like, I swear, when I was a kid and we used to run around the neighborhoods and go for walks at random Why areas and changed? stuff. You know, there's not really anything to do. And, and honestly, like, people in Tulsa, like, we don't really... A lot of our families, you know, a, a lot of us come from broken homes. Like a lot of young people, a lot of us come from broken homes. And while a lot of us do go a different route, some of us, you know, go down a different route. But that's a given, you know. Some, with some people, you're a product of your environment. You I know? agree, but I, I, I also, um, I there's and I've tried. Like I taught up there for a while. I wanted to make a difference because the urban culture, the urban mindset, I can't stand it. It's like. And, and right. I, I just can't stand the urban mindset. It's like they put themselves in a box or they want to keep each other in a box. Right. But one of the craziest things about Tulsa, this is so dumb, is you can literally grow up in Tulsa, North mm-hmm. Tulsa, mm-hmm. looking at somebody's backyard. Say they're on, they're on the next street. Mm-hmm. Ten years later when we're teenagers, we're shooting at each other because we both Crips, but... You, this crip, I'm that crip, but we live like right there. We're right across. That's the dumbest well, thing. So I only know that in Tulsa. It's silly. Why can't they A lot think? of the gang activity that does go on in Tulsa is silly, yes. But at the same time, what? it's one of those things that it happens everywhere. Yeah, but you go to a big city. It's the same. You I go know, down to I've L.A., to Compton, Chicago. I've been there, but here's the thing. It's chopped up. It's segregated. Like, you mm-hmm. go over here, you know. You go over here, Right, you but know. that's because a lot of the people... So, a lot of the people that are doing the banging and stuff now, these are young cats. They just now I jumping off the porch type shit. Or niggas that then... Heat. Well, no, because I know a lot of niggas that's in the streets that be out here acting crazy, but them niggas got hands. But they want... Well, why they always go to the waistband then? Well, not all of them do. There are some that do, of course, well, just because there's a bad apple the with all of them, See, you know? I've gone up there. I passed out 300 flyers one summer and not right. one person came. Yeah, I don't. Um, they don't want to train. They want to, do, but they want to go up there. Well, because a lot of them, they just. You got to remember, like a lot of people don't have another choice. You know, that's just the life that they've grown up in. They don't like some people weren't given a chance. I get it. You but, know, but at the same time, but, believe me, I get what you say again, because in Tulsa, it's not like Detroit, Houston, Memp. Like I've seen, like even the projects here in Tulsa. Mm-hmm. Man, you go to some major cities, it's way different. Right, very and much I so. I think in Tulsa, with you're just one person away or one day away or one choice away from making mm-hmm. a good thing happen. Right. Where I, I do believe what you're saying is true more so in other cities. Right. But at the same time, like, the thing with other cities versus Tulsa, like, we're not them. You know, like, you can't really compare Tulsa to other cities at the same time because the people that are here aren't them. Like, yes, Tulsa is not as bad as what people may think. It's really not. You know, I grew up on the north side. I still go to the north side. Yes, I've had a couple of situations, maybe a handful of times, but that's everywhere you go. You know, I've had situations in every city that I've went to. You know, I've had situations when I was in college, out of state, you know, like on the other side of the country, and I've still had the same problems, the same BS you that happens here. It's just... Not particularly because sometimes it'd be people that I don't know, that I've never seen in a day in my life before, ever in life. You know, sometimes that's just how things go, you know, like in the, in life, you know, shit happens, you know, stuff happens. You can't really avoid it. So it's one you- of those things where like the young people that are doing all of this, like, don't get me wrong. I don't agree with that at all. You know, I've lost a lot of people that way. You know, I've lost a lot of people that I love and that I care about through drugs or through guns and just through dumb shit. And it's not cool at all. But at the same time, I can't fault them because a lot of people weren't raised how I was. They they weren't raised with the morals and values that I was. These people are in survival mode. They don't care about nobody else. They do what they got to do to get home and I ain't get back to their families. I, just I like I am. The, I think I already know the answer to this, and I talk and preach on this and speak on this a lot, but how important how important has it been in your life to be close to your dad? Very, very, very important. My dad is probably the most important person in my life. Pro- not even probably, he is. He's the main reason why I am the way I am and where I carry myself the way that I do. How important versus North Tulsa or anywhere else? Because I, I see, 
I, I mean, even dudes and moms, you know, I don't want to get no hate mail, but I, and I know moms are important. They absolutely are. But I, I just see, especially with women, men too, it's just important to have a, a dad as it a is. role model and a figure. And it does for through. sure. Because like, so the thing with like stuff like that is like, I see both sides of the spectrum because, you know, I, 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 I've been friends with a couple people who weren't as fortunate as I, as, as I was when it came to parental households and, you know, all that. But um, for me, it was just like me and my mom, like me and my mom just weren't very close. Like uh, growing up, me and my mom were not that close. Like I loved my mom to death. Don't get me wrong. I was, you know, I look just like her. I act just like her. Everything I do is just like her, you know. But I was more so close to my dad. Like your mom teaches you how to grow up and be a woman. Your dad teaches you how to grow up and be a lady. Just like with a son... Your dad teaches you how to grow up and be a man. Your mom teaches you how to be a gentleman. They have different roles, so, like, you can't even really, like, compare the two because, like, yes, there's traumatic differences in people that grew up with a two-parent household versus someone who did not, you know, because there's that missing role that's being played. But it's one of those things that I'm eternally and forever grateful for. I 100%, and I don't give a damn what city, Tulsa anywhere, I saw it when I was teaching in a 98% dark skin North Tulsa school area crime bad decisions the number one problem in any any of any culture here in the united states and the united states is a lack of men being men and dads being dads or not there's not being a dad dads so, are huge so they are huge yes very very much so but you also have to remember like the reason why a lot of black men are not in the household right now is because like a lot of the things that goes on in, th in this country does play a part you know like a lot of black men go to prison for selling drugs killing people gangbanging whatever the case may be the reason why that is and why a lot of people in the hood are the way they are is because just like Tupac said the same people that white people are scared of that you guys are sending to prison and sending to jail and doing all this when they get out we live in next door to the killers we live in next door to the robbers and the serial killers and the rapists we we, we live in, in the same neighborhoods as them so when we ride around with guns we fighting the same people y'all fight we fighting the same demons y'all fighting the only difference is, the, is that we're closer the people that commit most of those crimes i found didn't have good dads very true that's very true point. but that's not really but that wouldn't technically be like a black thing that would be a humane like a, just a human thing in general because there's 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 missing fathers all across the board and most of those that don't have dads Mm -hmm. don't take the right a lot of those don't take the right paths that's my point is, yeah no a lot of i mean yeah. and then but you can look culturally and geographically and there are some areas and cultures where the there are more lack of male role models right in, in neighborhoods or right and i'm one of the biggest advocators of um we definitely need to fix what's wrong in our community for sure because there is a lot of missing black fathers in the picture 100%. you know there is and um it's one of those things where it's just something that you just hope and pray turns around like it's not something that i think it has to be taught it it, it does it definitely to have to be taught, taught but also like it does but also one thing that i've learned is like my dad can't control me right so like when i make a mistake and when i do something bad and when i'm out here looking different i always make sure i tell people like my dad raised me right but i did wrong on my own so you can't too much fault all the parents that have tried to instill how that many people are like you girl that own it okay. most people want to blame somebody or push uh, it yeah. off right well yeah that's true you but any it. person with a brain can see through something like that i know i can for sure like you can't really play that type of game with me because i'm gonna see it like once i meet your parents i'm gonna know I'm going to know because I'm very good with parents. I love people's parents. Like, people's parents love me. I've never really had too much of a problem winning over somebody's parents. Like, they love me just because I'm very respectful when it comes to people's elders. I'm very respectful to anyone who has any type of authority figure. For me, it's all, like, kind of based on, like, if you're if you're respectful to me, I'm respectful to you. What did Sade want to be when she grew up, when she was a little girl? Uh, when I was a little girl, I wanted to be a singer. When I was in high school, I wanted to be a rapper. I did poetry in high school. I was very, very, very good at it. I just, I don't know. Me and singing, though, I smoke too much to sing, man. My voice is gone. It's so like, in your lifetime, man, Whitney was big. Were you a Whitney girl? Yeah, or were you a so girl? I was a little bit of everything. You know, I grew up on a lot, but, like, mostly, like, the biggest female singers in my household was Whitney Houston, Sade, um, what is her name? I just left my brain. Tina Marie. 
Tina Marie, I'm obsessed with that woman. That woman gets all my flowers. Her and Sade, they was my favorite singers of all time. Can't nobody touch them in my brain, female-wise, you know. But mostly for our family, it was more so rap because my daddy used to rap too. So I feel like he kind of like, you know, passed that down to me. But ours was mostly rap, like Tupac, Nipsey. Like I've been listening to them since I was born. Like don't like uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony, Zero. Like these are people I grew up on. Spider Lok, Snoop Dogg, N.W.A. Is that is that something your dad and mom listen to, or is that just um, your, who you listen to? Yes, yeah, my dad and my mom, and they love. Man, my dad is a diehard Nipsey Hussle and Tupac fan. You can't tell him nothing about neither one of them. I'm the same way. I will fight somebody if you tell me something bad about Tupac or Nipsey. We will have a problem. Like I can't do it. Like them people are very crucial in my life, just like the way that they think. Like with Tupac, like his mind is what makes him in my brain the greatest rapper of all time. Like his personality, his traits, the way that he carried himself, the way that he cared about his people, and with his music, he touched on different subjects and different issues within the black community that a lot of rappers don't do. No I more. think, well, I, I'm glad you said that. Cause I, throughout history, whether it's soul, R and B, whatever you want to call it. I, I used to agree with this. I don't anymore. I used to agree with the fact that you could look at the black cultures, music and black singers, entertainers, and you could, they were telling a story. They, they were singing about their life at the time. Like even, in the 70s, the 60s and 70s, you know, you, you had Barry White and you had all these guys singing. It was love and it was, and then you got two, they were singing. You could kind of tell where the culture was with the music. Now, but, it's just all over the place. Well, very true. Very, very. So, the thing with that is like. There was a time where all of our music was all love and all like sweetness and, you know, but eventually like. The way that I see it is like this. Yes, there's a lot wrong with the with the music industry today and as a whole like, today. It used like to there be, is could, for they sure. Were, they were talking about where they were, right? And I and telling stories, and they don't anymore. I, 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 you know, a lot of people they're not. A lot of people nowadays they're not worried about telling their story. They're worried about making it out. They just they trying to get out of where they trying to get in where they fit in. You know, and I don't, I can't really I don't blame them. But at the same time, I know one thing about me is that when whenever I was writing my music, I wrote about stuff that I went through. I wrote about my life. That's I wrote what, about to shit. me. That's what you know. That's like why two, if Tupac wasn't singing about his mindset, about how he saw culture. Let's just say if he was here right now, this rap game would not be what it is right now. Oh, he. No, there would be like what the left, yeah, it'd be completely different. Yeah, he would I, not have none of that at all. He but the, would have it's been, changed no. to where it's not really about anything anymore. In my True. Opinion. Well, it just depends on who you're listening to. There are a couple of diamond in the roughs that be like XX Tentacion, Nipsey Hussle. Nipsey Hussle was this era. He was just also like early, like years He's ago. A old school. He is, but not too much because he didn't really pop off and stuff until around the time that I was a teenager and by then I already knew who he was I mean I've been listening to the marathon mailbox money I've been listening to all his shit since when I was little like like young I've been listening to him my whole life but like it's just one of those things where like you know that's evolving I guess that's just the music industry and what it's come to I, I think can't... music as a whole now is not as good as it used to be oh it's not by any means by any believe, means at all no old I... school music will forever trump yeah, new school music no offense school... to like the new school artists you know they I, I mean all you know... the way back I don't care since music start this is the worst it's ever been I think uh, it's not too b well it's it, yeah okay I think it, I, just, I get it I, I would say that as far as what they're talking about they all talk about and the I same mean, thing they all the sound the thing all they all sound the same roll, oh yeah for sure is I would say that there's the there's not as much um versatility like everybody's very similar to each other you know like but there are some rappers and music and um singers and country singers rock singers you know all across the board there are some that stand out it used to be. um you will not do luke combs like that my good sir there are some okay. good ones now <laughs> luke I'll, combs is my diehard favorite country singer of all good, time slow good meaning but see here's the deal you're still talking about somebody who sings about good about stuff yeah, but that's With all I emotion. really listen to. <laughs> yeah, emotion. And I'm R and B type of bro now. I used to be all into rap and stuff like that, but I, I, I don't know why. I'm getting very much back into my soft girl era. I'm trying to get back into my feminine energy. So I'm like on an R and B kick right now. <laughs> so just to get into the meat of it. So when, and or what, hap? When did it all? You just said I'm gonna I'm gonna become a dancer now. How'd that happen? Well. 
it's not really I was like I'm gonna just go be a dancer like it was never that like it was never and mind you I'm not gonna lie actually that's a lie that's a lie so actually when I was younger I used to always tell myself like one day I'm gonna do that like it's just always been something I so wanted to try wanted to strip. you always wanted to dance it's just pole dancing period it's not stripping as a whole it's pole it's it's just the pole dancing experience itself like I have a pole at my house like I love pole dancing like pole dancing it's just it's a part of me now you know and when I started like the only reason I started was because I met a very good friend of mine, even still to this day. Her name is BB. She's so beautiful. But I seen her come inside of my beauty supply store that I was working at. This is when I was working at Kim's. And she came in there, and I looked at her. I was like, are you a stripper? She was like, yeah, you know. I was like, you just look like a stripper. Because, like, she just gave that vibe that, like, like she was just, I don't know. There was just something about her. I was like, you a dancer, huh? And I was always so fascinated by dancers. I have the utmost respect for dancers. You know, we deal with a lot of stuff, you know. I have the utmost respect for dancers. But, um, yeah, no, she came in and she was like, oh, you should come and audition. I was like, all right, I'll come tomorrow night. So I was supposed to go the next night and I didn't end up going. I didn't end up going. How old were you when you? I was 18. I was 18. I was 18 when I first started dancing. So it was right after I came back from college. Didn't bother you? No. So did you graduate college? No. But you went to college? Yes, I did. I went for a semester. I went to play basketball, but things out there were not working for me very well. And I don't want to get too much into that, but it was so, not, no, it was not working for me. So I had to come back. You went and auditioned or how's that start? So I went up there. It was like a Sunday, I think. And I went up there. It was like eight o'clock and I went up there and um, she was like, oh, she wants to audition. This is finale. I was like, she'll have to come back the next night and do it because right now it's too late. We stopped taking auditions. So I came back the next day. I auditioned. I danced. My very first song I ever danced to was Porn Star by August Alsina. I love that song till this day. Till to this day. Like August I was singing this forever like one of the greats in my brain he's hard <laughs> but I ended up getting the job which was so shocking to me because I've seen some pretty girls stroll through night trips and not get it so I was like I don't know what y'all are thinking <laughs> I don't but I think it was just because like there's there's not a lot of people that look like me like I'm very tall you know I'm I'm very pretty so like I, I'm I don't blame them for hiring me you know I'd hire me too you know but you know it was it was a whole different experience and once I started like I just mind you I've had little jobs here and there you know I worked at the jail I I, I worked at BioLife as a plasma technician for a little bit um I've done a couple of things I worked at a car line I had plenty of jobs I just dancing was the one thing I always went back to you know like it always it's one of those things that I love the money not just that, it's just the freedom that comes with it. Like, as a dancer, like, you get up and you go when you want to go. You move when you want to move. You do what you want to do. And the money that comes with it ain't too bad in either one, especially once you get to traveling. See, me, I haven't even started traveling yet. I've been dancing for the past three years, and the only places I've danced in is Tulsa. I haven't touched Oklahoma City. I've danced in Muskogee. That didn't start till this year. I was waiting until, hey, I'm not going to lie, Coco Bongo's out of Muskogee, hey. It's a very small club and it's a country club, but when I tell you that that club has the potential to be really good, it has the potential to be really good because every time I go in there, I make money. So, on the outside looking in, um, and I and some of these questions I'm going to talk about, I know to be true or I've seen or whatever, but there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes, and some of it, and I know you're already going to say it's not everybody this and that, but do you have to displace yourself from from Sade to yes. Gemini? Yes. When you most go definitely. In? Like you can't, yeah. You're not the same so, person. So it it honestly it depends on the dancer to be real. But I know with me specifically, for me and for a lot of dancers that I know, for a lot of people that I know, um, the pe the person that we are, the people that we are outside of the club is not the person we are inside of the club. When you're inside of the club, you're not going in there to be yourself. Like, you're not doing that. Like, you're going in there to create a fantasy for somebody, you know, to make somebody like you. You know, like, that's what you're there to do, to make money. Like, that's what you're there to do when you get there. You're not there You're not there to get drunk. You're not there to have fun. You're not there to party. You're there to make your money. So you have to, with certain customers, you can be yourself, you know, with customers that are your really good friends, you know, your regulars. You know, you can be completely normal with them sometimes. But for some of the customers that you will have, it's not, they don't really want, they don't care about you. Like, they don't care about you, girl. They want what you given. you know? Like, they want the fantasy that comes with you. They don't want to come in here and hear about your life story, you know? Now, don't get me wrong. There are a lot of customers who ask that type of stuff. I mean, I don't really tell them because I don't, I don't know you. So, I don't want to tell you my life story, you know? But, Do you think um, that when men go into those places, 
they lose a little bit of respect for who you are as a woman? No. No. I don't believe that at all. At all. I met my ex-girlfriend in the strip club. She was in love with me. That ain't changed nothing. Guy. Well, even with men, no. Not, no. No. I don't I don't think that. It just depend. It, it depends on the man. You know, there are some men who don't want a woman who strips for a living. You know, there are some men like that. But then there are some men who see it and they like it. Like, like they have more respect for you because of it. Because you're doing what other people are afraid to do. People got to realize there's a lot of women. That almost 95% of women out here would definitely do, go dance. They would definitely go dance. I mean, all across the board. Females will definitely dance. It's all about, like, sometimes, like, it's the beliefs that have been instilled in them, you know, from fathers, from brothers, from moms, you know. It's just, it's never something that people are technically, like, going to like it's always one of the, it's 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 one of those taboo subjects you know for some people that they don't really why, like that's why we're dancers. here um so i've i've been i used to i used to tell i was a designated driver but i was basically bodyguarding doctors mm-hmm. and lawyers and businessmen i would just um in fact i made a lot of strippers mad because they were like what is wrong with you because i wasn't drinking nothing but i was just watching them Right. And I, I'd watched I watched some of these guys that made I mean so much money dropping thousands of dollars a night. Mm-hmm. And well, that's just because so the reason why that is is like for us dancers, like on the dancer side of it, if I see a man that comes in the club, you don't buy no drinks, you ain't spending no money, you're not getting no dances, you're not doing anything but sitting there. We're automatically wonder, wondering why are you here? I just tell her, but I was a DD. Right, which but I've had more. I probably hold now. A there are now there are going to be dancers who, of course, they I, don't want to take that for an answer. They're they like, oh, I, we don't I like that. Hold an you unofficial know? record for strippers want to know if I was gay because I would be like, get off me. I'm not here for that. I'm not interested. And that's right. What about. What's wrong with you? You gay? I'm like, no. I'm their DD. I'm, but I really, I was more than that. I just wasn't going to say I'm protecting them. Blah 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 blah. blah watching out for them. Right. But. Yeah, strippers get up. They get mad when you just sitting up in there. Well, some of them do for sure, but not not all of us. Not all of us, because a lot of us, like majority of dancers, we know like you're gonna get told no. Like that's just a given. That comes with the territory. It's like any sales job. We're sellers, just like everybody else. The only thing is, is that we're just selling a fantasy. Like there's a lot of strippers who make money just by sitting there and being cute i mean i've had vips where i don't even do dances or anything i'm just sitting there and talking and i'm making five six seven hundred dollars just sitting there for about 30 45 minutes so what do you think is lacking or whatever in a so when a guy goes there help help the general people watching this what do you think a, the average guy is expecting what's going like what does he want what's he doing a lot of men a lot of men that come in the strip clubs like honestly like they're not really looking for anything. They're just coming to have a good time, see some free titties, you know. It's never it's never like they plan they're going to spend that much. Like, that's never the plan unless you're dealing with, like, rappers, football players, NBA players. Like, people with a lot of money that go specifically to get that type of attention, you know. But majority, like, the average man that goes in there, they're just going in there to get some drinks. I sat and watched the room in places I've been. But that's all about the woman's guys mouth game. guys think they're, they're going to be the one. They're going to land. I watch them. They're going to be well, the one yeah. going to land a strip. I'm yeah, I don't know home. why. I'm yeah, I don't know why people think that because a lot of the time, the only way you're getting a stripper to come with you is if you're spending a couple grand. At least that's how it is for me and the people that I know. Like, we're not gonna leave the club with you and go do anything other than hang out and maybe go eat or something. Because I've done that. I've I've hung out with customers multiple times. I've went to their houses. We've hung out. You know, I've never been paid for any type of sexual favor because I don't like believe in doing but that. You but. Seen that. Oh, for sure. That's a given any, uh, to any strip club you go to. There's always going to be dancers who do stuff like that. And there's, you know, make your money, do what you got to do. I'm not going to knock you for it. I'm just not going to do it. But I don't blame you for it, you know. But at the same time, like, who knows? Like, maybe if the price was right. Mm-hmm. Who knows? So you don't. So being daddy's girl and 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 I know you, so it's kind of hard to, to talk to you like a stranger. Because I can't look at you as a stranger. But... um. I mean, so it's not it's not cheap for you to to or for them. I mean, they're not. It's not prostitution. No, it, that definitely is, but that's not something that I do again. So. And 
Uh, now, if I meet like a billionaire or something, he's like, I'll give you five million right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, that's five million. That's so life can, changing. So you can separate your body, like, for five million dollars, yes. So if someone no came, to, if for, someone for came to me and offered me five million dollars, I'm taking it. Now you would have to offer me some absurd amount to even think about it. I mean, when people ask me, like, because I've been asked in the club, I say an absurd amount to get them to be like, all right, like you doing a lot, like all right, you dragging it, you know, type shit. Like it's never something that like I would personally do, but I do know girls that do it, and it's for them, you know, if that's what they want to do, you know, that's what you want to do. I'm not gonna knock you for the way that you live your life and the way that you choose to make your money. And I got it. Maybe I'm partial to you. But I mean, I'm a dude. I've traveled around. I've been out of the country. Um, I've been a lot of places, and I know a pretty girl when I see one. Mm-hmm. Especially in Tulsa, and folks are gonna get mad. Don't get mad, but like, you're pretty for a stripper in Tulsa. All right, I don't like how that sounds. You know, I've been to Vegas with an, a businessman, an Italian mm-hmm. businessman. There, it has a place. I mean, he flew people in from Europe, girls. He flew people, girls from all over. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you could fit that crowd. Um, I just, I, I can't, probably because I know you, I see you be, being able to do other things. With, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Besides For sure. Besides that. Oh, yeah. So, like, this is the thing, right? Like, never get it misconstrued. I don't plan to be a stripper past 24, 25, maybe. 25 is still a little late to me. Like, stripping is a stepping stone. To what? Like, to anything, to whatever career path you want to go down. Me specifically, I'm really into art. So, like, painting and tattooing, you know, stuff like that. That's what I'm trying to get into. You know, that's what I'm trying to get my feet wet into. But being a stripper is never the plan. Like, I mean, a lot of strippers that I know are nurses or doctors or lawyers. So I've heard that. I'm, oh, I'm going to go to nursing school. No, I, no, I mean, people man. that are nurses right now that are dancing. I know people Why? because they're still paying off school. People that are still paying. So, I have a very best friend right now who's a NICU nurse. A NICU nurse, I, a NICU I've heard RN. That stuff over my lifetime. And no, every I mean stripper is gonna be a lawyer, a doctor. No, a it's not even a gonna be. I mean, there are strippers right now in Tulsa, right now, that are going to school to be teachers, lawyers, doctors, anything that you can think of. They're go- like there are dancers that are doing that for that, that are using that stuff to pay through college. I know strippers that have started full blown businesses, strippers that have turned into celebrities off of it you know like stripping is never something that i would recommend someone to do their entire life ever and by by any means in any circumstances it's never something that i would glorify to the next young little girl it's not but at the same time it's also not what people think it is either yes there are strippers who are not treating the game the way that the game is supposed to be treated you know, they're not playing the game correctly. There are a lot of strippers like that, just like in every game. The only difference is is that there there are a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of strippers who have very, very big careers, who are doing something very good with their life, who are on the right track, who are doing the right things, you know. Don't never let the handful get it misconstrued. So let's address some things that are thought. How many strippers do you think have to get drunk or stoned or something to dance most of them Mm, a lot of them yeah a lot of us do but that's just the reason why that is is because y'all have to remember it's very emotionally and mentally exhausting when you're constantly having to like talk to random people you've never met before constantly like try and get somebody to spend hundreds and thousands of dollars on you like it's not easy but there are also dancers who don't need it you know some of us just like to drink like honestly being a stripper kind of opens the door for a lot of drinking like it does guys always want to buy you drinks like that's a way into a conversation with a man honestly it's like get him to buy you a drink and after that putty in so your what hands what about because i know there's a lot of drugs and strip joints a mm-hmm. lot of drugs and strippers purses yeah so well not strippers purses a lot of the customers in the clubs are the ones selling the drugs they don't even really be the strippers the strippers just be the ones taking taking it like they be the ones doing the drugs only but the people in the clubs are the ones like that's giving it to a majority of the time like a lot of customers who come in strip clubs some of them a lot of them sell weed a lot of them sell coke a lot of them sell random random shit in the club so do you ever feel so you gotta understand it's hard for me because I know you and I've known you for a decade at least. Mm-hmm. Um, I could never come watch you because this is the girl that, that I, I care about, all that stuff. Like that, like I couldn't do it. And I, mm-hmm. I couldn't do it because, not because of my, I just, I couldn't watch other people do what they do because I know this girl. 
So right. You see, you know what I'm saying? And I mean, that's fair. Like you knew me, like when I was when I was damn near a kid. Like I wasn't a kid, but I wasn't nowhere near who I am right now. So I mean, that's that's and that's I understandable. Like I'm. I, I would am, never expect to see you in my club. If I, I see you in my club, I would run. I would run. I would run. I would be deathly afraid. Why? I saw my auntie in there, bro. I ran. Why would you run? Because, like, when I see you guys, I see, like, authority figures in my life. Like, bro, book it, run. Like, I've seen my father's friends in there, and I'd be running. I'd be ducking and dodging people. Like, I do not want to be seen. See, that's the thing. I would think I would catch charges because I've watched people. And so how do you deal with guys touching and the money. you got to be aggressive so for so one thing about it is that you cannot be a dancer and not have a backbone one thing about me i've cussed out customers i put my hands on customers everybody knows leave me alone that's that's a given everybody knows that leave me alone because when i've i've done you know i have a security background and i've done some high echelon stuff and body garden i i sit and i watch the room mm. like they may be all here at this table, lawyers, doctors, CEO, business guys, out of town guys call and say, hey, I heard you can. I'm like, yeah, OK, I'll, I'll watch out for you. So are those strippers or escorts? No, these are business guys coming. To but strip I'm talking clubs. about the oh, OK, they're in the strip club. And, okay. but they're, that they'll like they've hired me to right. watch them. It's crazy because I'm like, OK, you guys make a half a million, a million dollars a year. You're millionaires. And I used my 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 speech used to be don't wear your Rolexes. You know, if you're from out of town, don't rent this type of car. Right. If well, you're from in town or driving, as you don't should. bring your Porsche or your Lamborghini. As you should. Don't bring all that. But that's but just a do. given. They do. And I'm like, okay, here's the deal. You make all this money. You got all this lifestyle. Why do you got to? I guess I don't understand both sides. I'm like, because to me, here's the deal. If I saw you in the mall and mm -hmm. I didn't know you because it'd be mm -hmm. hard now. Like, you're attractive. Like, I would take a second look. But if I saw you as pretty as you are dancing... I wouldn't be turned on at all because it's not my thing. Right, that's fair. I mean, it's not your thing. A lot of men feel that way. Like, a lot of men I meet, I meet in the strip clubs, they're like, I don't want to know you in here. I want to know you outside of here. Do you think you that's know? just a line? No, Why are not they in there? Why are they in there? They say they don't Well, because some of them just, a lot of guys who come in strip clubs, like a lot of them that actually come in strip clubs and spend big money, because there's a lot of people who don't come in the strip clubs to spend money. They just come in there to drink. That's it. Because there's a bar. There's a hundred bars. Exactly. But they would rather go to the one where there's naked women walking around. That's just, that's just so men in general. they're coming there to see yes. and ass. Yes. And get so drunk. you can't say they're not there to see strippers. But they're not there to spend money. There's a difference. The, a lot of uh, my best nights have never been on a weekend. Never been on a weekend. Where the most people are there is never when I make the most money. I make the most money on days like Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays. Just last night, man, I was so mad. Last night, okay, hold on, wait, pause the conversation because I got to tell you this. Hold on, because literally last night, I mean, I swear, I'm laying in my bed. I'm chilling. I'm having fun. I'm alone right now. You know, I'm enjoying my time to myself because I like to be alone. I'm reading a book. I fall asleep. reading. I look down. It's, it's my best friend, Valentine. She dances at the divers. I answer the phone. She's like... Bitch, why is it a Tuesday and Waka Flocka is in the club right now? I'm like, you're lying. I mean, Waka Flocka was in like was in Lady Godiva's last night. I was so mad that I was not there, bro. I was so mad. I was like, bro, that could have changed my life. Like, what is so, it? Okay, when like, you say what? that, so what's he rappers? Do? Rappers throw an absurd amount of money in the street. I don't know what he was doing specifically because we're like Waka Flocka is Waka Flocka. So I don't really know if he's the type to really go in there and throw money like that. But rappers. Rappers, NBA players, football players, like them, those are the ones that spend an absurd amount of money in the strip club just because they can. And they pull strippers out of the club. Yes. And they go to the hotel room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are some strippers that will do that, but not every stripper will do that because I've ran into a couple of NFL yeah. players. I've ran into a couple of rappers, and you can't get me home with you. That's not how that works. That, not That's not by any means. want it even more. Uh, yeah, and they you just cavemen, you know, like, yeah, then you just go want it. There ain't nothing I can do for you after that. Don't come over here looking for that because it's not going to work. So what's up? Uh, yeah. So what's off limits? Um, you get titties and ass. That's it. After that, you're doing a lot. You're doing a lot. Like, don't touch my nipples. Move around. For I hit you because I will. Like I've done it before. I tried to break people's wrists in the middle of the club. I don't got time for that. Mm -mm. If I say don't touch me, don't, I mean don't touch me. You can touch the ass and the titties in a lap dance or in the VIP room. That's it. That's all you can touch. What's That's the all VIP you have access. Room? Everybody thinks the VIP room. Everybody. Um, that's where sex happens, drug happens. Well, that's because a favors. lot. So that depends on the club you're at. There are some clubs where that stuff does go on in the VIP room, but again, it just depends on the stripper. Every stripper is different. Me specifically, I've never had any type of sexual activity happen in the VIP ever since I've been stripping. 
And you can you ask anybody that knows. You can't be as pretty yes. as you. No, I've yeah. been offered plenty of times, but I've never accepted. But for the right amount of money. If you're talking about like five, ten million dollars, oh my mama, I got you. But other than that, leave me alone. I'm not I just feel like once at that point, I feel like someone could can come up to me right now and offer me five hundred thousand dollars to have sex with him right there. A half a million dollars. And I'm still not gonna do it. Because once I do that in my brain, I feel like that's what I feel like I'm worth. Like, that's how much it takes. And I don't like the idea of anyone. This this ain't a check you can cash. You got to come with some outrageous price. When I say outrageous, I mean like billionaire price. price On feeling cheap. In the millions and billions? Hell yeah, I got you. All the way. But anything less than that, leave me alone. And you're going to need, and it's not no one million, two million. So Even five million to ten million still might not be enough. I still just might not be in the mood to say no anyway. It just depends on the stripper, honestly. What's the worst? What's the worst thing you've seen happen in, in a strip club? Um, not even the worst, but I've had some stuff happen to me. Um, I had a guy try and yank my thongs off of me. Mm-hmm. I was dancing on stage, and it was this old Asian man, and he tried to yank my thongs off of me. And in the back of my brain, I'm like, now why would you choose to do that with the biggest bitch in here? Why would you do that? Because I'll fight you. I don't they care. Think about that. They don't. But he was super, super drunk. So I so shoved. Was he in his 20s, no, he was old? old. He was like in his 50s. He was kind of, no, not even 50. Okay, I'm dragging. He was maybe in his 40s. 40s, kind of chunky, heavy set, you know. He wasn't a little guy, but I'm drunk and I'm big and I'm big and I'm already like halfway above you because I'm on the stage. So when he did that, I just shoved him really hard and he flipped over his table. My manager escorted him out. He's like, what, what just happened? And I was like, he tried to yank my thongs off of me. He was like. So they can touch you in some places, not touch you in others. Yes. They can give you money, but they can't grab the thong. Like Definitely, most definitely. Because regardless of what we do, regardless of the fact that I'm a stripper and I'm dancing half naked, that does not mean you can violate me. That's not what that means. I don't care if you see a girl walking down the street in a thong and a bra and that's it. That does not mean you can rape her. That doesn't mean oh, you can I violate her. It don't mean you can try and yank something off her just because you're paying me. It doesn't but mean I'm up that for that. people go to, I 100% agree with that, 100% everywhere, even in a strip club. But I also think that there's a mindset that most men are going there and especially what I call pervert row. Try to touch, see. Well, pervert and, row, honestly. Okay, so like pervert row isn't even honestly really pervert row. Like, it's really not. Like, people up there are the ones throwing money on the stage. I love me some pervert row, but I've never really had a lot of issues happen at my main stages. It's always, like, the little side stages that be, like, in tucked in the corners and shit. Like, when people not looking, that's when people try and do weird shit. But um, I've, honestly, there's always going to be guys like that in the strip club just because, like, a lot of people in the strip club, like, we deal with a lot of, like, lowest of the low, like people that really we really don't need to be around and we really got no business being around but this is our job so we're here type thing and um you're always gonna have like people like that you're gonna have that in any job you go to like i've had my fair share of bullshit happen in other stores where people are sexually harassing me like that's just a given anywhere you go especially if you're pretty what's the worst things that go on behind the scenes drugs 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 i'll say it all day i just lost like a month ago one of my best friends passed away she over she overdosed she was um i i don't know exactly what it is but i know they found fentanyl in her system Mm -hmm. And that's all I know. And she was very, 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 very dear to me. She was very close to my heart. That was one of my very closest friends. Do you think that the drugs start off as a way to, to separate the stripper from the girl and then it just gets out of So not necessarily because there's a lot of strippers. There's a lot of dancers. And honestly, honestly, it's just the people that are doing them. Because I know a lot of functioning people who are on coke. You know, a lot. Of, I know a lot of functioning addicts, you know, and it's crazy, but there's a lot of them. And I didn't know it was, you know, when I was growing up, I thought that was stuff only crackheads did. But when I started dancing, that's when I noticed, like, how many people actually do it. I mean, businessmen, like rappers, um, football oh, yeah, players, basketball players. But on um, the stripper side, like. Even with us, like, the issue with stuff like that is, like, it just, it be, you become a creature of habit. That's your problem. Like that, that, that's genuinely the problem. Not having any self discipline, that becomes the issue because there are plenty of people who do coke, but they don't need it. You know, mm. it's one of those things where you do it so frequently, it becomes a part of you. Like it becomes a part of your daily thing, and it beca- it's like with weed. Because I'm kind of that way with weed. Like weed is one thing that I'm not giving up. I don't care what happens in my life. I don't care who offers me a job. If I can't smoke weed, I'm not taking it. I'm not taking the job. Leave me alone. I can't do it. Just because, like, me as a human, like, I'm not I'm not the friendliest person, like, by any means. 
by any means, like at all. And it's a problem that I'm and working you're in the on. Business. Yes, and I'm an asshole. Like you can ask any dancer that knows me. I'm so, not the friendliest person. Like I'm a sweetheart if I you feel know like, me. And to I be. may be wrong because I'm not mm -hmm. in that world, but right. I feel like you're not the normal stripper. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. No. But there's no. There's really no such thing as a normal stripper because we all got different backgrounds. We all come from different places. It's just there's a specific type you always run into. And it's the girls that really don't have a lot to lose, that don't have a lot of stability in life, that don't have the background that they could have, you know. And it's just one of those things where, you know, some people choose the wrong route, you know. Have you ever had somebody, a close call or somebody try to stalk you, follow you, mm -hmm. went too far? Uh, for sure. I've had my fair share of weirdos. Like, I mean, like fair share of weirdos like people that like pop up at my house unannounced how they find your house maybe knowing where i live like it's people that i've personally dealt like that i've dealt with that i've met in the club and we ended up dealing with each other outside the club but one thing about it is that they also know don't come over here acting a fool like they'll pop up on some on some, like some night shit like i've never had any like super bad situations just because i make it very very plus i'm very careful i don't talk to every customer in the strip club okay all money is not good money in my brain so just because you have money don't mean i'm gonna want to talk to you because if you do something i don't like i'm gonna separate myself because the easiest way i know how to deal with something like that and how to make sure it I do not have that problem. It's just to completely stop talking to you. See, just the half a dozen or dozen times that I've been um, from Vegas to here, I I just don't think that that's the normal mindset of normal of average strippers. It's not of average stripper at all by any means. There are a lot, but that's just because a lot of people walk around here thinking that they cannot be touched. A lot of people think that they are untouchable. And don't get me wrong, my name holds weight in Tulsa. For sure. A lot of people know who I am. A lot of people know who my family is. A lot of people know me. You know, a lot of people know to leave me alone because you don't have to deal with me. And I'm not the nicest person by any means. So, what you know, the people that I hang around are not to be bothered. So I don't really like it's one of those things where, like, I carry myself like not to be played with. Like, that's how I carry myself. Like, I'm not the friendliest person because of that. I don't talk to a lot of random people because of that. Because what people, what dancers specifically don't understand is because, yes, you are a girl. Yes, you may have connections to people in the streets, all of that. But they are not always going to be there to save you. So you talked about maybe traveling. Now you're going to go somewhere where nobody knows Exactly. Anything. Exactly. Well, it, the well risk go up? it definitely does. But that's why one thing about me, that's why I waited until I was 21 to leave, for one, to exit state, so that I could legally carry a firearm with me at all times. So you, you can carry... <laughs> Yeah, once you, you turn leave. 21, in, in Oklahoma leave. specifically, in right. Oklahoma specifically, other states, you're you, going to have you, to get a license. You're gonna, so how Carry you a gonna, pistol on my hip, yes. I, oh, I'm, all, I'm a full flag waving, I believe, pistol, everything, but carrying that into a strip club well, or carrying it. Well, no, it's one of those things where that's why when you're in the strip club, you have to be cautious because in a strip club, not every, now a lot of the time, there are strippers that sneak pistols into the club, that sneak knives into the club. You know, a lot of girls do that simply for our protection. But one thing about me is I don't need really to do that because I don't talk to a lot of people. When I first started dancing at night trips, the only reason why everybody figured out who I was is because I would not talk to a lot of people. Like, they would see me, and they would see me sitting somewhere in the corner, minding my business, smoking a black on my phone. Like, other than that, like, I'm not the most outgoing person. Yes, there are days when I'm drunk and I'm super friendly and I'm super, like, rambunctious and outgoing you know but then there are days where you see me and i'm very chill like i'm not the most i'm very calm i'm very collected i'm very laid back i know how to de-escalate situations very 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 well simply because i do not want to get into any type of situation to where i have to physically put my hands on somebody because it's just i don't like fighting it's never been something that i've enjoyed you know doing like i don't like putting my hands on people i've never liked putting my hands on people but also you know I'm one of those people that if you take me there, I'm not going to feel bad for what happens after that because you got me to that point. And I know that I let you slide a lot of times before that because I don't ever disrespect nobody first. I give my respect. But once you return my respect with disrespect, that's when we have a problem. And my respect is something that I will gladly lay my life down behind, you know, because I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to go out of my way to bother nobody else. So, so leave me alone. I have a little girl. I, I, it would break my heart if she was doing what you were doing. Someday you have a kid. If you had a little girl, would you want her doing what you're doing? It wouldn't bother me if she did. 
Because my little girl would know how to represent. She would know how to act. That's the one thing that I love about my father. I mean, that's that's one reason why me and my father are so close is because no matter what I do, he's supportive in it. No matter what I do, just because he has so much faith in the way that he raised me and the way that he parented me, he knows I know how to behave and I know how to act. And I will always carry myself like a lady because a lot of people do know me. I know a lot of people. My reach goes very far. So I, I can't just... I have stuff to lose. I I have shit to lose. A lot of dancers don't. A lot of strippers don't have nothing to lose. Now there are a lot of us who do have something to lose. In the business across the board. Well, I wouldn't say now. I wouldn't say that now. Maybe back in the day, yes. But as far as now goes, I can't agree with that. Only because a lot of strippers now are business owners. Are people that are actually like, they're doing this shit for a reason. Like there's a reason why they're doing it. And they're not going to be doing it for that long. I have one of my best friends who's like that. I have a friend right now who's um going to start going to get her law degree soon. She's been stacking up bread, trying to get See, that hear, shit going. I hear all that over the years, and I'm just like, okay. Yeah, but there are girls who actually do it. Just like you, just like you say, okay. When it's us, we say we say okay the same way whenever anybody tells us anything. So the same way you feel about strippers, we feel about you guys as well. So it's okay. But I think most people are full of shit. Yeah, and we do this. We believe the same thing. We believe every like. My motto is trust everybody. I trust everybody. Oh, no. no, but this is why. You got to trust that that liar is going to lie to you. You got to trust that that cheater is going to cheat you. you. You have to trust people to the point that when they show you who, you, who, who they really are, you believe them. Like, all right, this is who you are. I can't change that. People's problems is people won't trust people to the point to where they won't get to know them and they won't let them in. So when they start showing their true colors and when people start acting funny and people are still around them, like, bro, what are you, like, what's going on? You would never be in that situation had you been trusting them from the beginning. So if you were, so I'm, you would do it all over again? I would, absolutely, because every lesson I've learned in my life has got me to where I am today and has got me to the person I am today. And I'm very proud of the person so that I am. So when you're done... What are you going to do then? Done dancing? Mm -hmm. I'll have my own businesses up and running. Multiple. I plan on having multiple Are you incomes. already saving money? Yes. Cause and I'm already putting thing things in motion. Is, cause I'm going to make more money tomorrow. Make more well, money no. Tomorrow. Well, no. Now, don't get me wrong. I do have a very bad problem with that. Only because I'm a shopaholic. I got a problem with shopping. You know, get my hair and my nails done. You know, I like to be good. But one thing about it is one thing about me is that I will always make something happen. That's one thing I love about myself. I can be in the lowest place of my life and you'll never know. You'll never be able to tell because I'm very good at holding my my shit together because that's one thing about me. That, that's another reason why I, I love my dad so much is that he definitely taught me how to get out here and make something happen without anybody, without any help. I mean, I've been homeless. I've lived in my car. This happened. You know, I've I've had days where I didn't know how I was going to eat, how I was going to pay my bills, how I was going to do anything. I've had days like that. But I've also had days to where I didn't have a care in the world. You know, I've had days where I know, like, regardless of how down bad I get, I'm going to figure it back out just because that's just the that's just the spirit in me. Like, like that's just the type of person I am. Like, it's in my blood. It's in me. It ain't on me. Like, it's in my family. Like, this is what we do. You know, no matter what we go through, we're going to figure it out. So, for me, I let – I live life like I won't be here tomorrow. So you know, what do you think that most guys, when they walk into a strip club anywhere, what do you think their um, their biggest misconception is? What do you think that any girl in the club will come home for you, will come home with you for the right price? It's not accurate. Because one thing about me, if I meet you in the strip club, there's no way you're getting me to come home with you. You're not gonna have that look, look on me. Mm -mm, you're not gonna look. Mm -mm. What's the worst line you've ever heard? What's the worst line somebody's thrown at you? <sighs> Oh, me and you can make some money together. <laughs> I hate that shit. That shit makes me so angry. That shit makes they me go, so angry. So you wanted to be a pimp. Yeah, I get that shit. Oh. And, it, and I mean, I've seen young, I, I've seen niggas who are like 19, 20, 21 coming in talking that shit. And, and I mean, don't get me wrong. There are some young niggas that is out here doing it, you know, doing it. Want but, to pimp you out. Yeah, but there is, but one thing about me is that when I first started dancing, me and my dad had this conversation. Like, we've been had this conversation. I already knew what a pimp was before I started dancing, you know. Once I started dancing, he was like, look, I don't care what you do. You do what you got to do. You be safe. But don't you ever give your money to no nigga. And I stand on that. I would never do that. I'm sorry. You you can't. You, like, there's not a price. I don't care if you're the most famous pimp in the world, if you got billions and billions of dollars, and you tell me you'll change my life and you'll change my dad's life and my family's life. I will never, ever do a lot of girls. Do that. There, lot of girls I know a lot of them. I know a lot of them that do. A lot of them. I know a couple of them. 
I can name so off the top of my head. Stripping, and they're making money. Are they gonna let some dude come in there and talk some bullshit, and then they're gonna go basically become a prostitute? He's talking about he's talking about prostituting them outside the club, right? Is that what they're talking about? I don't know. It'd be I ask myself the same question every every day. Like I've never seen the point, but you know it you works see? for some people. You know, so if it works for you, do your thug this or just don't come over here with that because I'm not doing it. I ain't gonna knock you for doing it. You know, you do what you gotta Especially do. Especially in Tulsa. You know, hey, to each his own. You know, hate the play. Don't hate the player, hate the game. You know, I'm not, I ain't going to be mad at you for doing your thing, but don't come over here thinking that I'm going to get involved in that because I don't, I don't, I don't get down like that. If I'm going to do anything, if I, even if I was, okay, I'm not saying I would ever prostitute before you get to looking at me some type of way. I would, I, if I was to do that, I would never, I would never be giving my money to no nigga. Not if I'm out here, no, I worked for it. What do you mean? He didn't give it to you. He gave it to me. Why would I give it to you? So so you can manage it. So you can make shit happen for us. I can do that by myself. I don't need no man to do that for me. All I need you to do is be my man. That's it. That's all I need you to do. Nothing else. Do you believe in God? I believe in a God. I'm not. I'm. I'm not religious though. No. No. I, I'm. I'm not Christian. If that's what you're asking. Do you? Mm -mm. Where do you believe your mom is? You believe she's somewhere happy. happy. I believe she's somewhere happy. I believe in a afterlife. I'm not going to put a name on it or a face on it or anything like that just because me personally, I don't know, you know. But when it comes to stuff like that, like, I'm more so, like, into spirituality, like your third eye, your seven chakras, like, stuff like that. Like, I believe the sun is my god, you know. It's like one of those things. Like, I believe that there is a higher power that created everything. But as far as Christianity itself goes, no, that's not something that I believe in, nor will it ever be. But, I mean, I was raised in a Christian environment you know my grandma was christian i went to church every sunday and wednesday but it didn't so i don't agree with you it you don't believe in religion it's not you that don't i believe don't believe there was a jesus you don't believe there was a god uh i believe there is a god but as far as putting a name on it and doing all that i'm not gonna do that because i don't know i wasn't there i'm not gonna do all that because that may be other people's religion which i completely respect you know you your beliefs are your beliefs but me specifically me personally Christianity itself is not a religion that I would ever believe in. So if you could if you could go back in time, is there anything you'd say to your mom? I would tell her that I need her. That I love her. You know, that there's nothing that I ever wanted to accomplish in this life without her right there with me. You know, like it's never like that was and what sucks about it is that growing up, like it it like it's not that what happened was very out of nowhere. Like, we hadn't had any signs in a long time. But when we were young, I remember there were times when my mom was going through a lot. And she would all and, sh and she would tell me and my sister when we were real little, your lives would be so much better without me. Did she f fight with depression? Yes. Is that what it was? Yes. My mom, um, if I'm correct, she had bipolar disorder as well, if I'm correct. Untreated or? Uh, untreated. Like, my family, we don't really, like, we don't really believe in, like, that type of stuff. But we recently, like, after all that stuff happened, we, be, like, we started, like, okay, we need to go to counseling. We need to do this. We need to do that. Like, we need to right. make sure that mentally we're all okay. You know, that was something really big in our house after that happened with my mom. Like, we got very much into mental health and self-care and taking care of yourself mentally, you know? Do you have brothers and sisters? I have one sister on my mother's side. I have one sister. So she's a half sister. No, she's biologically yes, but that's my sister. You know, okay. we grew up at, we grew up together. Right. Like she has plenty of other siblings. She does on, on her dad's side. She has sisters. She has brothers. For me, she's all I got. Okay. I got one of her, and she got one of me. Because in my brain, I'm the main sibling for her. So you were twelve when that happened. Mm -hmm. My sister was like seventeen, sixteen, somewhere around there. Okay. Maybe fifteen. I don't know. For and you're sure. both were all living at home. Um, yes, my sister, the day that it happened, my sister wasn't even home. She was around the corner at our friend's house, and we were supposed to be going to get her, and then everything just went to hell. I so, don't know. And, and this happened at home? Mm-hmm. And how, how was she, how was this found out? Um, I heard a gunshot go off. Yeah, I heard a gunshot go off. My dad was on the porch, and I just remember, I remember, like, going towards her room, stopping, like, right in the doorway, and then I ran back out, and then I see my dad start running in the house, and he ran in there, and he started yelling, like, call the cops, call the cops, da da da, da. And we called, and they, they were, I, and I just remember him coming out of the house, like, because I went outside. Like, I went outside, like I, like, I specifically remember me sitting on the side of the house, by the dumpsters and stuff like I was just sitting down I was crouched down on the ground I was just sitting there and my uncle came over there and got me but um I remember after everything had happened um I just remember 
after that gunshot went off and I was outside, I was calling the cops and I just see my dad like come out the house and he's like running down the street because there was an EMSA, there was an ambulance parked down the street and no one was in it. Oh, really? It was empty. And he ran and, and I just remember seeing him come out the house with his hands out and he just had blood all over him. He had blood like all Has over he ever him. Remarried? No. My dad will never, so my mom and dad were not legally married. They were common law married, but they were together for years like my entire life they were together they had their issues you know like there was times where they broke up but right. they were together you know like that was that was you know they were together forever but one thing about my dad is he will he won't ever get married now because he never got the chance to marry my mom so now he won't ever marry anyone i mean you know like he 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 can have a girlfriend like it doesn't bother me at all like i was the one that pushed him to be like hey go like do it like I don't like it's not gonna bother me because I want him to be happy you know like I don't want him to sit and be depressed right. and be sad and his life revolve around me because I'm not always gonna be there you, you know like I'm kids? um no not per like it's something that if my partner wanted it I would fold probably but me personally it's never been something that I envisioned for myself you don't be no I've never seen that life for myself I just haven't I'm too much like my mom and my mom is a very good mom. She was an amazing mom. But um, the same, like, issues emotionally and mentally that she dealt with, I deal with, like, a lot. And I would never, like, I just don't want to bring my ch a child into that, you know, not till I'm emotionally and mentally stable enough to do something like that. But until then, that's never going to happen. Like, I don't, I don't foresee it ever happening. I don't even really see myself getting married. You know, I don't really see that for myself. I like to be alone. I don't like people, like, at all. People irritate me. Like, if I could move to an island where no one was there but me and I had my unlimited amount of food and weed and liquor, I'd be good. I'd be straight. I ain't got to pay no bills. You have to have a pole on the island? Nah, nah. There's trees. <laughs> I'll just climb shit. It's okay. <laughs> all right. I, Sade, man, it's been awesome. Um, I I felt it just hit me. Um uh, I do believe in God and I, I felt like sometimes that's why I'll just something will hit me and I'm like you know I need to check on this girl and this I was not planned that. this was not planned like it was like it was and I was like because I've got a whole bunch of stuff we got like 50 60 videos to shoot we kind of wait for the weather to change and, and then I was like literally 72 hours ago I was called our Big dude over here, John. Big shout out to John, the guy that makes it happen behind the camera. And yes, John, you're there. awesome. But um, I uh, I was like, you know, I that's something that you don't really people don't talk about stripper life, how how you get there, what the mindset is, right? What's behind the scenes? Because we all think that most of us, and I guess in some level, you said we're true. It's true, but it, maybe th maybe it's changed, and maybe it's geography. But you always think. Sexual favors, prostitution, drugs. But I just, I want to, I, see, I want to put an end to that narrative. I really, really do because it's not the case for a lot of us. A lot of us, including myself, including a lot of my closest friends. Like, we're not in it for that. Like, that's not what we're about. We're not going to do that. Like, we're just not. Like, I know a lot of dancers who don't, who will not do that. Like, they refuse to do that. Just because it's such a big stigma on us that the minute you can be your know, first night into dancing, that someone's calling you a whore or a slut. Or like you're just, or or oh you're a prostitute. Da, da da da. I've had people say it to me, and one of my biggest things is, I me personally like it doesn't really bother me too much, but I know it does. It does hurt other people's feelings, you know, because we we are still humans, you know, we're still women at the end of the day. So that would never, that should never change how you respect us. Because at the end of the day, if you're a man and I'm a woman, your respect should always come first, regardless of how you feel about me. You're a man. A man is supposed to carry himself a certain way, just like a woman is supposed to carry herself a certain way. And there's a lot of dancers who, just because we're dancers, don't mean we're less than, don't mean we're whores, don't mean we're sluts, don't mean we're prostitutes, doesn't mean we're pimping ourselves out. You know, a lot of us are college students who don't have any other way to pay for it, who need this money to pay for it. You know, blame the men for making the market so big. Shit, y'all, y'all hate it so much. End it. Yeah, the ones who made it a big thing. <laughs> That's what I tell customers all the time when they come and meet with that. I'm like, well, y'all the reason why strip clubs were invented? Who do you think made the first strip club? A man? I'm pretty sure. And I'm tempted to Google it now, just because. I, I it promise goes back you. to the old West days. Exactly. Yeah, girls dancing in saloons. Exactly. And... They had prostitutes then. Oh, but yeah. the only reason why this market is the way it is is because of men. Don't hate the players, hate the game. Now there's this big thing. And, I mean, I've there's – World, world famous MMA fighters and I mean a lot of known people has fans only 
or any of those genres has that affected stripping at all um so honestly to me so i've never done only fans not because I wouldn't do it. It's just because I don't know how to work it. Like, I'm not the most tech savvy person, okay? I know I'm young, but I'm kind of slow sometimes, man. Like, I cannot help it. Like, I cannot work that shit for the life of me. But one thing I will say is that um, I do think it's not helpful to the dancers. It's definitely not. But a lot of dancers are are on OnlyFans. Like, a lot of us are so on OnlyFans. Both. Yeah, a lot of dancers do do both. But that's only, like, I feel like, if anything, OnlyFans help you reach people that you can't reach in person. You know? It just makes it global instead of just... In the city. So I've never seen it. I hear people talk about it. So it's basically, is it fans only or only fans? Only what, fans. What is it, John? It's what? Only fans. What? Only fans. Only fans. My that's, tech that's guy. And John only fans. John only knows because he's such a technical guy. Right. That's He yeah. knows mm -hmm. all that. He uh -huh. knows all that stuff. He's a I love to believe that. So um, <laughs> yeah, if anybody was a hidden pimp, it's John. John's I, smart. I, mm. and, oh, yeah. He's a tech guy. Mm. So really... Only fans is would be kind of like a stripper in a VIP room. Uh, not you really. Talk to him? Well, no, not really. Okay, so sometimes. yeah, sometimes. So Only Fans. Oh, <laughs> Only Fans is basically a website where girls post nudes. Men do it too. Don't get it messed up. Men are on Only Fans. There's a lot of men on Only Fans. I got a couple of them on Snapchat. But uh, <laughs> so you don't but, interact. With them. Um, you can message them. You can you can like you oh, can build like relationships. No, 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 no. It's not a cam website. So basically okay. what um, I think, can you go live on OnlyFans? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if you can go live on OnlyFans. I'm not sure because I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, he said allegedly, but I'm not on OnlyFans. So I don't really know for sure. But what I do know is like, it's like nudes, nude videos, um, sex videos, like stuff like that, that women post. And what you basically do is that you can't see this girl's stuff unless you subscribe. So why would? So why if you subscribe, you got a monthly that? subscription that you have to pay. It's like paying for Pornhub, except that's there's that's one specific saying, girl. Why, when there's so much free stuff online, why would somebody do that? Because it's more for personal. Like yeah, it's more personal. I mean, so they're not free, but you so can. So it's next level perps. Though. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty. Uh, it, but honestly, there's going to be stuff like that everywhere, so not yeah. even. And don't get me wrong, like, it's not, like, I don't frown upon it. It's like doing porn. I don't mind you. That? I don't understand. It's like paying. It's the same. It. It's the same reason why people pay for porn. Yeah. Yeah. People make thousands. And I mean, I, I know girls that have made it to like celebrity level off of OnlyFans. Like how Kim Kardashian so made it. I, but I don't even look at them. So do you think that that's a different level of, you know, like you said, there's Gemini and then there's Sade. Do you think that's another level of displacing yourself? Like well, no, because then you're not in my face. You can't physically touch me. So if anything, you're more comfortable online because no one really like they don't know where you are. They don't know really who you are. Um, they have no way to really contact you outside the website unless you give them one. So um, now, don't get me wrong. There have been situations where women on OnlyFans have been stalked, have probably been attacked, have probably been on types of shit from stuff like that. But it's the same. The same risks that come from stripping come from doing that on that level, though. It's just it's just put on more of a global scale, you know, like. It's a little more dangerous in my head because, like, if someone really wanted to, you know, there's hackers out here, man. Like, there's people that can hack into the freaking Pentagon, for God's sakes. Like, it wouldn't take them half so, a second to hack into you, my shit. You wouldn't, you don't, you wouldn't do that. No, I can't do OnlyFans because I just don't like the op now. No, 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 no. I will say this, right? There is a way that you can make your settings on there to where only people in certain areas can see you. Like you can make it to where only people in certain countries can see you. That now you now you might be able to get me to do that just because I just the only thing that freaks me out about OnlyFans is that anyone and I mean anyone can get access to it because all they have to do is go in there and pay for it. So this anybody may, can this get it. May sound weird, but like your dad does know you dance, yes. of course. And you said that anybody that you've ever really known, when they walk in, you just... You, I run. You can't. I run. Like, I will go hide. Like, I'll run to the locker room. So there's right a part now. of you that's still a little It's just, girl, like, certain and, people... And you know that... You know that... It's not that. It's not that. It's just certain people I don't want looking at me. Like, when I'm half naked. Like, it's just weird. Oh, I, like, yeah. people that I know that are friends with my father. Like, if you're friends with my father and I see you in a strip club, I'm gonna run. I'm gonna run. That would be weird. Like, it would, it, like it's kind of weird. Has anybody... Maybe too close to you tried to come see you? I mean, like, these people are like, no, I don't ask. I just don't talk to you no more after that. Once you do that, you weird me out completely. If you weird me out, I'm not finna try to explain while I'm weirded out. I'm not finna do none of that. The quickest way I know, like I said, this is my father's fault because he made me like this. He taught me this. 
the quickest way I know how to dare the issue is to completely stop talking to you. Ain't no beef, ain't no animosity. I got love for you. I'm just going to love you from a distance because you're being weird and I don't like that and I don't want to deal with it. I don't even feel like really explaining it. I'm one of those type of people like I will ghost you and you will never see me again. You will never hear from me. You will not be able to find my social media. I mean, I will block you on everything. Like I'm real quick with that block button, with that block button and, and that report button. Yeah, you're out of there. You're out of there, buddy. See you later. All right. That's a wrap for another issue of The Truth Behind the Smoke. If you got this far um, and you liked the podcast, you liked our girl here, both sides of her, hit the like button. Try to follow us. Also, go to viciousathlete.com uh, and afighterschance.org. Uh, find out more about that. Viciousathlete.com. Um, help support fighters, upcoming fighters. Uh, I'm a fight coach, for those of you who don't know. And I have a nonprofit, um, afighterschance.org. And uh, kind of check that stuff out. We help a lot of people out and uh, be looking for some of that stuff. We got something coming up um, also, and I won't go into it now, but John and I are working on a documentary, not a podcast, a documentary. Um, we got somebody that um, is about to come out of the pen and about to do a fight career. We're going to be there the day he walks out. He's walking right up to John's cameras, and we're going to start – a, a document with that so like us follow us and give us comments and we're going to be right back at you as soon as we can and where can we find this girl at you can find me on instagram at she moans gemini or you can find me on facebook my name on there is lizbeth i do not use my name on any of my stuff you will never hear me call myself sade so That's don't good. call me that in public if you see me don't say sade <laughs> say gemini please don't tell people that's my yeah, real name and, and i just got to tell you man i've known this girl don't don't be don't be rude or bad to my girl because I'm gonna have to come find you. I'm gonna bring my wadded up ears and my guinea pig head, and we're gonna go rounds if you disrespect my girl. And I can fight too. So thank you for being here. Anytime.